It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Hey, today I want to go through Konica's financials a little bit, but I'm not going to really focus too much on the numbers. I want to focus on the mythology and how they put these things together and what they're talking about. Because quite honestly, folks, you know, and I've been a little critical of Konica Minolta over the last year and a half. And the reason for that is, you know, over the last decade plus, you know, the, the industry's media out there today basically is Konica Minolta's marketing department. And we all know that and a lot of us joke about it, but it's the reality. Konica Minolta, you know, gets a lot of press and it's always been about how innovative they are. They're the smartest people in the world. And, you know, all the things that we would question when we look at the results that they're delivering. It's just, I'm just saying it the way it is. But the bottom line, folks, you know, I started thinking about, you know, Konica Minolta and the position they're in right now. And, and I, I'm going to throw a big old bone out here to, to Sam and Patrick running that show right now here in the United States anyway. You got your hands full. OK, I'm, I'm giving you that. You know, you've got your hands filled. Over the last 12 years, you know, Konica Minolta has, has grabbed opportunities and put them on stuff that wasn't working, grabbed more opportunities and put it on stuff that wasn't working. And now you got a whole lot of stuff that obviously isn't working because you're not knocking it out of the park, making any kind of real money. And if you are, shame on you because you don't really emphasize that in the financials. You don't break it out as a U.S. business model. And here's where we're making all of our money. And other than, you know, making grandiose statements, there's really no proof in the numbers behind the grandiose statements. And I would welcome both of you guys to come on the end of the day with Ray. You probably dismiss the show. You probably dismiss me as being irrelevant, but it doesn't really matter because I'm not the only one that thinks this way. And it seems to me that you should be able to come to a venue and explain really what's going on over there. Because when you look at the numbers, it's not good. When you look at how you're talking about Konica Minolta from, from, from the folks back in Japan and the leaders and how they talk and describe about Konica, they're not talking about the same stuff we're talking about here in the United States. And there's a disconnect there. And that's what I want to talk about today. So, you know, you could go out there, folks. I keep telling you, they're all over the websites of these OEMs. But I pulled them up and I, I put some pages together. We're kind of going to go through these. But, you know, bottom line, if you take the whole company, all their different business units, their total for nine months in is 661.5 billion yen. They have a negative 10.2 billion yen profit. Whole company, negative 10.2 billion profit. Let's dig a little bit deeper. You know, I wanted to bring this slide into play because I did a video not too long ago and Konica had won this award for 34% growth in all covered IT services. I looked through Konica's financials to see if I could find that anywhere. There was no talk about it. And it seems to me that if Konica's all covered in the United States, their IT business grew 34%, that would be all over the press. You'd think that people back in Japan would have been writing up separate little blurbs about that. Look what this is doing. Our IT investments are paying off. We spent X amount of dollar, dollars on all cover 12 years ago, and look what's going on with that company now. We need to take this philosophy and this business process and these numbers to the rest of the world. We're so excited that we can do it in the United States. None of that. They just lump it all together. They talk about it now and here as their MRR continues to achieve high growth at 15%. So I guess that's the worldwide number, but all covered in the United States grew 34%. We averaged out at 15%. What exactly does that mean? You see, that's the kind of stuff that I think Konica needs to get a little bit deeper in how they explain that. But let's look at the digital workplace, digital workplace business unit, all the MFPs, right? The IT services, all, all that stuff in there. 333.7 billion yen for the nine months in. Their operating profit is 9 billion yen loss. Overall, the company lost, what, 10 billion yen? Workplace, the digital workplace business unit lost nine. So basically, the digital workplace is dragging down all the rest of those business units. That's just the reality. And, and folks, I, I think we need to really start asking questions about this digital workplace unit. Not just here in the United States, but in Europe. You know, what is the services outside of this MFP, outside of this workplace hub? What is the revenue coming from? What's that reoccurring revenue on those IT services? An investor would want to know that because that would be the future. Folks, here's the bottom line. OEMs can't do this. Most people watching me, most people in the industry realize this. We've had other leaders in the industry, you know, in the press, they're talking about this. It's not just Ray. OEMs cannot deliver things they don't make. They just can't do it. And, you know, someone reached out to me recently and they said, well, Ray, you know, you say OEMs can't be in IT services, but Xerox just went out and bought an IT services company up there in Canada. 
they're growing their IT services business. I don't know how many times I got to tell you all this. Xerox is not a damn OEM. Xerox sells products other people make for the most part. They make a few products up in the industrial space, and I'm just, I would just bet you they'd get rid of that in a heartbeat. But when they're buying IT services companies, when they split their company up into those four different units, right? Folks, they're, they're, they're trying to change the game. And it's not their whole world isn't around a box. They're getting into software. They're getting into augmented reality. So there is a big difference. And that's why when Xerox goes out and buys an IT services company, I don't get fired up and say they're crazy. When I see our friends that are OEMs, major OEMs that are making equipment, I don't know how they can possibly pull it off. And we've had those videos already. But you know, Konica, in their integrated report, they said that this digital workplace business unit was only going to contribute 23% of their, of, or 24% of their operating profit by the year 2025. That's pretty close, folks. And I figured out how they're going to do it. They're just not going to make any money in that division. <laughs> It'll represent 24% overall. You know, right now it represents 53%, which that's a little skewed <laughs> since they're not making any money. But folks, I got a couple other slides here I want to talk about. You know, they, they, everybody's going through the same struggles, right? Our friends at Xerox, our friends at Kia Sarah, our friends at Rico. I put together some of their numbers. We got, you know, Rico in there at 2% operating profit. Okay, it's not a home run, right? You know, I mean, the ball went out as far as the pitcher, but at least they're making some profit, okay? You got our friends over at Kia Sierra in, in, the, in the place that we all call home, that solutions business, 7.5% operating profit. Pretty good number for these trying times, I would say. It's one of the highest in the space, folks. Our friends over there at Xerox ended up with a 5.3% operating profit. Again, it's not a big home run, but folks, we're all in a struggle, right? You know, we got this supply, crazy, you know, supply chain issues, chip shortages, this damn virus, it just won't go away. So there's a lot of, we're all struggling in the same ways, but for some reason, Konica is just struggling and pulling out any profit from that. And there's, there's a should be question, you know? I want to talk about this workplace hub thing a little bit because I, I don't get it. I mean, if you're doing all this business with IT services, with real reoccurring revenue, why do you talk so much about this workplace hub? And let's be honest, folks, what the hell is this workplace hub? You know, I, I put a, uh, I went on the website. I had, I had, I just had to really start studying this thing. Folks, let me get my Sharp Interactive Board working here. You maybe If you're out there in the marketplace and you're selling this workplace hub, please reach out to me and tell me, what the hell is this, how it works when you're engaging with a customer, because I'd really like to know. So it says here you have a core perfect for a server room. Okay, that's one piece. Like it's a little computer that goes in your service room. First question I'm going to ask of Kotica is who the hell has a server room? And then we have the, the, you know, the MFP thing. I guess it's connected to the MFP. And it does all these things. Let me read all these things. Network faxing, healthcare bundle, features review, print management, Workflow automation and document management. It seems to me it's doing all these things that other OEMs have figured out how to put in the cloud. They don't need to have a computer connected to the machine. But see, this is the problem with the hardware manufacturer. You know, they got to make stuff. You know, they're probably talking, how many of these workplace hubs are we going to sell? Folks, I'd love to know that number. I'm talking about this thing for a long time. I, you know, this is almost one of those things I think a couple of sales guys were in a bar. You know, they're probably senior leader sales guys for Konica, but they're in this bar, they're having a drink together, probably had about eight drinks by now, and they say to themselves, why don't we come up with a workplace hub? We'll put a little computer that attaches to the copy machine, we'll throw that thing in the server, we could be in the IT business. It's kind of like those companies out there that put IT after their name, and all of a sudden they're in the IT business. Let's put a computer, attach it to the copy machine, we're in the IT business. Folks, I know that's a little bit cynical, but really, come on. It seems like we're trying to drag, what, the past to the future. Every other OEM has managed to do all of the stuff in the cloud. Unless I'm missing something, maybe that'd be, you know, that'd be another reason that, that maybe Sam or Patrick could come on the show or send somebody else. But what am I missing with this workplace hub? Everybody else is doing this in the cloud. You guys are doing it through a device. And we're losing money. Let me cross this thing off here. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure what's on my last slide here. I guess this is just the forecast. And you know they didn't they didn't they didn't really change the forecast on the digital workplace revenue number. They're still going to come in at 470 billion yen. 
professional print, they want to come in at 192 billion yen. But down here on the digital workplace, they want to have a 6 billion, 6 billion yen profit, which is $52 million, by the way. They want to make $52 million in their work workplace business unit, which would be 1.3%. I mean, it's better than being below the line, 1.3%. I mean, you know, Rico had 1.5 not too long ago. If they can get to 1.3 in that group, that'd be kind of nice. I'll do a video, you know. I want to know where they got the numbers from. They probably won't be able to tell me that. But, And then in our print, professional print, they want to have a 3 billion yen profit or, or $26, $26 million. So basically, they want to gain $78 million in those two things, and they've completely lost right now $78 million over here. So I, I don't know how they're going to do it. So they got to get even at 78 million. They got to try to make 78 million. One of the ways they could do it real quick is stop selling direct. One of the ways they could do it really quick is maybe spin off the IT services business to somebody else and quit spending too much money after a decade plus trying to do something that maybe can't be done. Because folks, I'm telling you right now, when you read through Conica's financials, they don't really talk about this IT services business. They lump it all together with a little number, and at the end of the day, they're not excited about it. And if they were excited about it, I assure you, it'd be splattered all over the place. We wouldn't be just hearing interviews about how we're knocking it out of the park. Because you can go out of the park with a foul ball, but that doesn't mean crap. Folks, it's not just Conica. All the OEMs are going to have to make some really, really tough decisions. And those decisions are going to be absolutely painful. But one thing's for sure, they got to make money. And everybody watching me knows this. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.